Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Shield.com. From Hobus's Hemi Hideout in Brookshire, Texas. Yeah, baby. This is the award-winning In Wheel Time car talk show. Just ahead, we got a very special guest. We're going to give us a little overview of the Hemi Hideout right here on live radio and television. You'll hear my thoughts on driving the new 2024 Hyundai Kona and Mars as this week's events calendar. Just ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, who's out videotaping or doing and something great. Come back. Wait come a minute, back. I think he may be in the men's room. Mike, come back. That's okay. We need more Jeff Zekin, our chief engineer and bottle washer, David Ainsley. I'm Hello Don there. Armstrong. So glad that you could join us today. And thank you for joining us out here at the Hemi Hideout. Uh, you met John Hovis an hour ago on the show before everybody arrived. And right now we've asked John to give us kind of all the people that are here, of which uh, some 500 people are here today. Yes. And so uh, we're going to have all of these people hear John give you an explanation in his own words about the Hemi Hideout. Okay, John, it's all Don't yours, forget, sir. Don't forget we're in 51 countries. countries. Pardon me? We're in 51 countries. We're 51 countries around the world. 51 Shut up. countries. 51 okay. countries. There you go. <laughs> okay. I want to welcome everybody here today to the Hemi Hideout. Uh, for those of you, how many have not been here before? Can you raise your hands? Wow. Gosh. A whole bunch of them. Okay. This is a man cave that got out of control. So we started this project about 11 years ago. We didn't have one single piece of these signs. And me and about 30 of our friends, uh, including these guys here, have helped put this together and make it what it is today. So we love having the groups come out and uh, share what we've done. There's a story on all this stuff. If you ever want to come back and uh, do a tour and find out specifically about all the things. There's a story about it, everything in here. It's not just the beauty that you walk in, it's sensory overload, and you're like, my God, what in the world happened in here? But there's some cool stories, a lot of Americana and history in here, and so much fun to put it together. So today, we're glad to have all the Corvettes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We normally don't allow Chevrolets in here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, just kidding. We, we love all the cars. And uh, just so you guys know, uh, Don Armstrong is the voice on Sky I-13 here in Houston. And uh, he's having a helicopter come out to video all this. So you might want to take a look tonight when you go home. That'll be something fun to do. But uh, anyway... Uh, about 10 years ago or 11 years ago, we built Hemi Hideout and we didn't have a single piece that's in here. Uh, we've collected all this stuff like we're madmen on steroids. So again, about 30 friends that helped uh, find this stuff, crate it up, ship it, get it here, uncrate it, fix what's broken. The restorations have been done. Uh, I don't know where Bill Prokopic is, but by the way, we've got a restoration shop behind the building and you can take our golf carts back there to go see what's being restored. And Bill is doing some amazing things and can bring something that's totally trashed out and bring it back to life. So it's amazing the crafts and the skills and all the sweat blood, sweat, and tears that went into this. It screams a uh, labor of love and it certainly was that. Uh, Again, thank you guys for uh, Tony Longi. I, I don't know where you're at, but Tony, in a minute, remember, you got to come on a radio show. Uh, but thank you for putting this group together. It's amazing to see $20 million worth of Corvettes sitting out there in one spot. That's unbelievable. But uh, one, certainly one of the coolest cars ever developed. I, I'm a big fan of Corvette, and I've had several of them, and I think it's the best money you can spend for technology. I don't know how you top it. So anyway... Um, I don't want to tie this up too You're much. Not gonna, no, no. John, as a matter of fact, because uh, we're doing two different – I'm doing the broadcast, and he's doing the public address in here. But I did want uh, to everybody that doesn't know about the structure itself, that in itself is a story. Okay. And I think that everybody would really like to hear about that. Okay. This is the tallest timber frame or the largest timber frame building in Texas, not by our design. It just ended up that way. But uh, it's all a Douglas fir. All the timbers are Douglas fir. Uh, the decking is cypress. Uh, all the uh, timbers are assembled with the oak dowels. You'll see the, the, well, you can't see them down here. But anyway, the pins that are in the posts there, all assembled with oak dowels. There's no screws, bolts, or glue. And it made the most beautiful palette to paint a picture with all these signs. So we run around the country. You've seen the show American Pickers. 
we're the real ones and those guys are the fake guys. <laughs> anyway, but just fun to put it all together. What a ride we've all been on. Thank you all for coming out. But what, what else we need to talk about? Well, uh, the, first of all, it, it's named the Hemi Hideout because of John's love for the Hemi when he was back in high school. Yeah. And he's made a beautiful collection of Hemis. Yeah. We'd love to hear about that. Okay, right. I need him to lead this. He's, he's <laughs> okay. taking the lead here. Uh, I had a, a Dodge Super B when I was 18. I had hair down to here. Rolling Stones on really? wide open. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot has changed since now and then. But anyway, <laughs> I thought I was swinging the world by the tail of that Super B. But that's why I love the Dodge in Plymouth. But it's like the Corvettes or the, uh, I think we have a Viper Club here. Or whatever you're driving, it's in your soul, whether you're a Ford, Chevy, Pontiac, whatever. And the music we all listened to when we were kids the good old days, and you don't realize what's the good old days till we start raising kids and career building, and you look back, and oh, my God, the good old days went right through my fingers, didn't even know it. So that's kind of uh, what we're trying to capture here. And the other thing is, too, John, that I want to point out is that John has some very unique, special, and some very, very expensive Hemis here, including uh, the actual, is it, do you have the Super, uh, the, the Superbird down there? The Superbird's the a 446 pack. Yeah. The Super, to, that's the one that has the wing on the back of it that was, uh, really took NASCAR by a storm and after one year was outlawed and that sort of stuff. And John's got one of them down there. So be sure and look at the car collection what you, while you're here. And I have to tell you all, my favorite, hey, I'm a Corvette guy, but my favorite is the black Duster that's up here uh, because it's got a bench seat, a four speed, it's got a Hemi in it, black on black, Mwah, sweet it, as can does be. Does it say for it, sale? It's a 340, actually. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't say for sale, oh, but it says it a 340, it. whatever the well, case may be. Well, my wife says everything in here is for sale, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that she does. So uh, there's, there's also a very interesting sign that John has, and it actually predates neon. You want to tell him about the Texaco sign? Uh, yes, the Texaco sign would be kind of up into the middle over there. Um, anyway, uh, it's the first version of Illuminated Sign for Texaco. Uh, is there somebody over there that can turn that on? Yeah, there, she's fixing to turn it on down there. Anyway, that's the first version of an Illuminated Sign for Texaco in 1918. There are only two blocks of New York City had electricity in 1918. Uh, so if you bought that sign, you had to buy a generator, and then you, you could uh, illuminate your entire service station. And if you're old enough to remember the Milton Berle Show on Sundays, the man that wears a star was a sponsor for the Milton Berle Show. Mm -hmm. They were in front of everybody's face. But that is a cool sign right there, the only one that survived from 1918. So really a special sign. Now, to tell you how weird I am, when John first started the Neon Collection, I came in here and I said, John, you've got a sign down there, a Dodge sign that's in a box. Yes. Tell them that story. That's a 1938. It's down on the end. It's got pink letters. It's blue with pink letters. But uh, that's a 1938 Dodge sign. We found it in a crate in Franklin, Tennessee, and in a building that's about to fall down. But uh, never was installed. Still in the original crate right now. We just saw the slats out, plugged it in, and it fired up. So you still find things, new original stock in the crate, even today. And I don't know whether anybody here is a, a fan of the Hemi hideout on Facebook, but there were a lot of postings about one of John's latest signs, and that's the bulldog down at the end. Yeah. Man, I'm glad you're here to. That, you're that's welcome. The one I was, that's the one I was thinking of, too. <laughs> okay. Oh, the bulldog on the very end down there, that's a really cool sign. Uh, that we believe, we can't substantiate. People say it came off the Allentown, Pennsylvania manufacturing plant, but that's a Mack truck bulldog, 13 and a half feet wide, 11 and a half feet tall, and uh, we brought the skin or the face of it, the porcelain sign, and then Bill Prokopic, our uh, restoration expert, uh, Built a can, put all the electronics, and we put all the neon on. But a really cool sign of your collecting signs. Now, and the real marquee, if you will, with all the signs and the Hemi hideout is the sign that's behind us. And I think that that's a fascinating story. And John has that. Okay, so this uh, this came off of Rustler Chevrolet. That's Rusty the Rustler. And, uh, uh, of course, they used Porky the Pig. You had to pay... Uh, one, a Looney Tunes, I think, a fee to use that figure, but that was in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and if you lived anywhere in a five-state area of Cape Girardeau, you recognize that sign if you were there in the 1960s. So we added a gunshot blast to animate it, and uh, just a cool sign. It was a double-sided sign, and it was split out. A lot of people split these signs and then sell them as two signs. So if you can find one intact, 
like this one or that one, the double-sided ones, those are, for me, the way to collect. Where's the other half of this one? In Georgia somewhere. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. So you do know, that is, does it work like this one? No. I don't know if it does, but I don't know how you top it. Yeah, well, it, well, and not only, how do you bring it back together? It probably never will be. That would be cool to do it, but then who has the space to display a double-sided that? Just well, need a bigger building. A, <laughs> oh, yeah, we add on. Yeah. Add on, that's exactly right. And yeah. before we go and, and wrap this up, uh, I did want to mention my dear friend and friends, actually, Bill and Sharon Sites, and Bill had a, a huge part in all of this here and, and helping John build the building. But uh, you'll notice Bill's artwork and... Um, uh, I didn't know this about Bill when I met him at the Corvette Club, but it eventually did. And no, he is the guy that does all of the artwork that you see in here, the animated artwork that you see. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important to point it out. Truly talented guy. He's here today. Do we see you out there, he Bill? He was over there earlier. I saw okay. him. Okay. Wave your hand if you can see us. No, we don't care. <laughs> uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, also he did the, uh, the actual uh, tile that's right in the yeah. underneath the, the, uh, the cupola yeah. out there in the middle. So uh, Bill designed that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's hand-painted, isn't it? All those tiles are hand-painted? No. We, there's, he, our, Bill did the artwork. We had a, a lady transpose somehow oh, okay. in San Antonio gotcha. and fired the tiles and put it together. And I don't want to speak out of school and have people wandering around in places that they're not supposed to, but I think that you'd be okay with folks walking out in the back and seeing the back patio and the bar area out there with the saddle seats. Yeah, that's kind of they're, they're starting to fall apart, but anyway. Well, we won't talk about <laughs> that. It's rodeo season. It's it rodeo is, season. It is rodeo time, but uh, you know, if I were to tell anybody, and I know that I have some friends of mine, a pilot, uh, James Fox, and his girlfriend are here today who's never been here before. And that would be to explore all the nooks and crannies. John has uh, done a marvelous job in collecting things that he likes. BSA motorcycles, who remembers those? Or how about the tractor collection that's over here? Uh, there are certain areas, or the, the, the Tessanosaurus Rex or whatever the thing is back there. And the latest thing is fossilized monkeys. Oh, who well, doesn't like a, that? You're a weird guy, dude. Let's that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. They're great with Holland. But any rate, right, uh, so thank you, John, for having us all here. I think that John deserves a great round of applause. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I need everybody to wave their hand. I'm going to take a picture. Everybody wave, wave for John. Yeah, we're going to take a big wave. picture. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all. And, hey, and be sure if you join us on inwheeltime.com, Facebook. Subscribe. Uh, yeah. And we do video and podcasts and all that stuff. We'd appreciate your help. And if you've got other events, let us know. Yeah. And we'll, we'll post them and, and talk about them and get you on the air. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you all again for coming. Okay. Um, let us do uh, – let us do – a break yes and then we're going to do commercials and then we're going to get mars back up here to do the events calendar okay yeah. hey the in wheel time car talk show is available 24 7 through the iheart radio app just look for in wheel time car talk we also video stream our three-hour weekly show on facebook youtube and in wheel time.com and podcasts are available from your favorite podcast provider the in wheel time car talk show continues right after this quick break pro-am auto accessories has been serving houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984 providing world-class products for sports cars european sedans and american muscle Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through ProAm.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, 
to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Uh, the ML Time Car Talk Show, available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Did I already do that? Oh, you can do it again. Okay. Well, it never hurts. Um, yeah, we also Keep video going. stream, three-hour weekly show. Usually it's on from 8 until 11. Today we're pausing the show start uh, so we could be here for today's big and what an event it is. Yeah, it is. It's truly, I've never seen so many people in here. Uh, we're also on Facebook, YouTube, at inwilltime.com, and podcasts available from your favorite podcast provider. All right. Uh, time now for our next guest. The, we, 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 he's going to be on at the bottom of the hour. So let's do, let's do the events calendar. Uh, can we do that, Mr. Mars? Can we do the events calendar? <laughs> You're not busy enough. Well, no, he's got to do five more things. No, yeah. He's all right. Uh, and, he's and got it all way, coordinated. By the way, Mars, Mars. There, yes, 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 there, yes. There's a mop over here. And we need, and we need <laughs> I was going to get that on the way we, we out need, we need a clean up, uh We need a clean up on aisle seven. Aisle if you could fix seven. your microphone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's a bunch of Corvettes outside. I'm trying to get, get, get CTA everybody. to call. Right, everybody. everybody. You go do your Everybody, thing. everybody. Events. We got events coming up. A couple of events real quick. The H, these are some different stuff. H Town Throwdown Car Audio Show. If you've never been to an audio show, that's exactly what it is. A lot of booming, a lot of noise. But this is an IASCA sanctioned event. With a lot of classes going on. Sunday, April the 14th, 2 to 7 p.m. 14901 State Highway 249 in Houston, Texas. All right. If you've never been to one, it's Different, definitely different. And then coming up, the Houston Art Car Experience 2024, Thursday, April the 11th through Sunday, April the 14th. And this includes the Houston Art Car Parade. So this experience covers a lot of different things, including the parade where they're expecting 200,000 spectators to come and see that parade. When is this? April 14 through April 11th through April 14th is the whole experience. Several days worth of stuff going on with the Art like Car Thursday Parade. Thursday through Sunday or something. Keels Wheels, May the 4th. Saturday, May the 4th, and Sunday, May the 5th. <laughs> did you lose no, your place? I was, yeah, I did. And I was going, what? What does that say that? Anyway, this is at the Lakewood Yacht Club, and uh, it's the annual car and boat show, Keels Wheels, Concours de Elegance. The boats are in the water. Yeah. That's what's really unique about this. So you've got boats in the water, classic wooden boats, and you've got classic cars this year. Resto mods are going to be featured. Do you think I could bring my fishing gear and maybe sit in the back? Well, I think no. there, there's a couple of them that's got fishing seats on them, so if you ah. might could uh, sit on the back of some I of like the yachts. Stand when and I by fish. the way, yeah. I've had to look it up. How you really pronounce Concours d'Elegance well, is the way it's pronounced. Concours d'Elegance? Uh huh. Concours de, Although it looks like Concours yeah? d'Elegance. De, de no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's maybe the hillbilly way of pronouncing. But, but it's come on over to East Texas, and we'll talk about oh, it. All right, fine. And then we're going to make the Hot Rod Tour of Texas 2024. That's exciting. April the 25th through 28th. And the kickoff party is in Victoria on that Thursday night, mm -hmm. Friday morning. Head off for three days of cruising through Texas. And in wheel time is going to be there. Yep. And then we also are going to be at the Lone Star Street Rod Association. Yes, yes. Lone Star Street Rod Association State Run, June the 12th, Granbury, Texas. Yeah, make plans to attend. All yep. right. Time now for this hour's car review. Had a chance to drive the 2024 Hyundai Kona. Comes in the SE, the SEL, the N-Line, and the Limited. I had the Limited all-wheel drive. This is considered a small SUV I would consider it an extra small SUV. Five passengers, including the driver, all new second generation Kona, this particular model. Now, it has been restyled. Polarizing styling with big black plastic wheel openings. Uh, now, on certain trim levels, like the inline, those big plast plastic wheel opening moldings, if you want to call them, that's more than that. It's body panels. They're painted 
which kind of tones it all down a little bit, uh, and that would be my style. I just am not a big fan of unpainted black plastic. Uh, front, li- uh, front light mounting is outboard, and it is in those moldings that I just told you about. It does have a different grill and lighting on the front of the hood. It's got this line across it, and people said, oh, that must be some sort of an electric vehicle. No, it's not. The lighting is in the hood. Now, I will tell you this, that they do have an EV model. We're not talking about that. This is a gasoline model engine. The rear has bulbous fenders, where also the lighting is placed in those fenders. What I liked about it, the different... The different design stands out on a crowd. If that's what you're in for, hey, I got it. You get it. You're there. What could use improvement? (laughs) Odd placement of lighting takes some getting used to. This is not a car that I think is an everyday person car. You have to really like this thing. On the inside, driver instruments and infotainment screen combine for an attractive dash. The end line trim adds some attractive red accents throughout the cabin. Large open catch all in the center console is handy. Seating is comfortable. Cargo trunk room, being a small vehicle, back there in the back is very small. What I liked about it, the overall layout in the interior is good with cubbies everywhere. What could use improvement? Uh, I don't know at this price point, and you'll hear that in just a second, I think that it kind of fits in the price point if you want to stand out in the crowd again. Mine had the optional 1.6 liter turbo four-cylinder engine that has 190 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. If you're going to get one of these things, that's what I would suggest. Anything under 200, it's kind of pushing the limit no matter what the size. Transmission is an eight-speed automatic. Gets 24 miles per gallon city, 29 on the highway for combined to 26. I got 28.9 miles per gallon over 472 miles. What I liked about it, uh, I think that the engine is perfectly matched to the car. This is not a hot rod by any stretch of the imagination. What could use improvement? They do offer an EV version, as I mentioned, so you might want to look at that if you're into weird-looking EVs. Ride and handling, nicer than you would expect with such a short wheelbase. This is not a track car, but a commuter, small kid hauler. Base trim price. 33150 Price is tested 34695 but you can get in one of these the base model price is 24250 Competitors the Buick Encore GX for 25600 the Chevy Trax for 20400 which is my choice among these four and the Mazda CX30 for 24995 Go check all of those out then go look at the Hyundai Kona for 2024, and you tell me what you think. And you can do that by emailing me at don at nwheeltime.com. And that's my review of the 2024 Hyundai Kona. Nice. Um, I have, do you have a headset on with a microphone? I do, I do. So uh, Mars, isn't, guess. Mars isn't with us. I no. know, but we, he'll, we'll oh, be back. We're going we'll we'll to we'll save him for the bottom oh, of the yeah. hour. All right. So let's do Hemmings. Sold Cars Roundup. Woo-hoo. Okay? These are used cars that <laughs> are being sold scorecard. online through Hemmings.com. Sold Cars Roundup. Just stay right here. You ready? Got a scorecard. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. This is for you, Jeff. All right. 1965 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. This is probably Four as door? big as the 23,000 square, 21,000 square foot <laughs> Hemi hideout. What do you think that that car sold for? Uh, 65 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. With no other information, I'm thinking 17. 17. What do you think, David? 10 grand. 10 grand. Well, it sold for $14,700. If you could fit it in the garage, now granted, you'd have to knock out the bathroom behind the garage to get the front bumper in there, but you could do that. All right? Uh, An 82 Toyota FJ40. Now, this is kind of like their version of a Jeep Wrangler, if you will. 82. The 82 82. model. And, you know, these are popular because of their scarcity. Can you give me any? Does it look good? Um, Wheel drive. Yeah, it looks good. There you go. Right there. Can you see it? It's that beige-looking thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Upper left-hand corner. 4x4. It's a 4x4, yeah. V8? 
Um, probably not. He's probably throw ha- you a curve. Probably He's has throwing a you a curve. It. It's an 82 model. What do you think? $8,900. Wow, that's high. What do you think? Oh, see, he's throwing 50, you a curve. 5,500. How about 26,775? Wow. Here's one that John Hobus would like. A 1951 Dodge Power Wagon. I don't know what year the one that he has back there in the back. The green one that's all been restored. And what year but against that particular, But that particular one is, is a 1951 that's on for sale here. 51. Yeah. So how much do you think that that went for? Don't leave. Tommy Noto and CJ are here. We're glad you're feeling better, and thank you very much for coming. Don't leave without me. So, 23. 23, what do you think? 27. 46 2. I was closer. Yeah, you, yeah. How <laughs> you about were. a 1993 Ford Bronco? Ford Bronco. 93 Ford Bronco. Uh huh. Anything. 93 Ford Bronco. A 93 Bronco. Ford Bronco. Kind uh, of one of those uh, 12 grand. Uh, OJ. 12,000. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go 11. 17640. Oh. It looks brand new, actually. Nice. And I, I don't know all the details of it. This is a game that we play, and I like playing it. <laughs> yeah, I had one of these, a 1993 Chevy Camaro. Looks pretty good. It does not look like it's a Z28. Okay? A 93 Chevy Camaro. My daughter ragged hers out. It was my hand me down. I had a 92 RS. Yeah. A 93 uh, Chevy Camaro. Five grand. Five grand, you? $6,500. Uh, $8,500. It's clean. Okay? Nice. Here's one for you. Uh, 1966 Ford Mustang convertible. Remember, the Mustang came out in 64, so this is a couple of, same body style. 66, what do you think it sold for? 14000 14? What do you think, Jeff? I'll go 12. Okay. Well, it sold for fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Oh wow! Okay. Wow! Yeah, I know it's a pretty good deal, actually. No, well, it depends because we we don't know what it looks like underneath. But. I was impressed with my guess. Yeah, <laughs> I was too. Yeah, very good. Well, we're, we're impressed with anything that you do, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I uh, like to remind everybody that you can get in touch with us. Just shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. We'll be back right after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana, stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.